Today we're working the crab stitch. We're gonna make this edging so you can add it onto your uh, crochet projects or even a knit project. You can do a um, one color effect like this one, do a two tone, which really stands out on, on the crab stitch edging, or you can even add it in the round directly onto some chains like on this decorative t-shirt basket in an upcoming uh, video and pattern we've got going. Join us at Good Knit Kisses and we'll show you the crab stitch. Welcome to Good Knit Kisses. We're all about helping you stitch your love and love your stitches. The crab stitch makes a lovely border. As you can see here, you can make um, a two different colors, a two-tone border, or keep it going in the same color, or even do it all throughout matching your main project. The um, samples right here are showing working with a project that uh, needs to have this single crochet going around it so that you have something to grab onto for the crab stitch. But you can also do what I've done on this basket. Like I said earlier, uh, this will be in a later tutorial, but I'm using a t-shirt yarn and I'm just going over these chains here and putting it directly onto uh, my chains and not needing the single crochet. So either case, um, you can put the crab stitch right onto your work. Uh, the main thing to notice is see these big knucklings? Uh, I call them knuckles, this little twisted part, kind of knotted. These are more pronounced the bigger, thicker yarn you use. So whatever yarn you use, that's fine. Just make sure it's appropriate. Uh, the first thing you're going to do, um, be sure and click down below to get the written instructions uh, down at our blog. And uh, you're going to want to start by grabbing your appropriate weight yarn and hook and get your project. You're going to want to fasten on and single crochet all the way around and then put three single crochets in each corner. Either make a corner or put it right in if you've got a granny square or something. Okay, and if you need a tutorial for a single crochet, please click down in the link below for a slower tutorial. All right, we're going to grab our supplies and we'll begin the crab stitch. So you've got your uh, established base here, and we want to tie on our yarn onto the edge. Uh, I'm not going to use a slip knot. I'm just going to pick a spot kind of right in the middle and just pull through, go right underneath both of those uh, loops there, pull up a loop, and then take my working yarn and yarn over and just attach that, okay? Now, we're going to be working in the opposite direction you normally do. It's a single crochet in reverse. So you're going to take your hook, and we're going to go to this stitch behind it, and we're going to go underneath. So you can do it like this, or you can take it and dip it like this. I think it works really well to dip it like that. And then grab your yarn and pull it through. Okay, we're just grabbing it, whichever way is easier for you. You don't have to do it exactly the way I do, but just grab that yarn, pull it through. So now you have two loops on the hook and they're really kind of squished together. Now we're going to yarn over and pull through both. It's important that you keep your tension nice and loose. Don't try and pull really hard on it or your project is going to get scrunched up. So uh, now we want to go down to the next one. You've, you've already done the first one. It has this little knuckle up here. And then when we do the next one, this part locks down. So we're going to go through the next stitch right underneath there. Okay. And yarn over. So grab it and pull it up, twisting it. And then yarn over and pull it through. And that's it. So let's do that again. We're going to go into the stitch. Pull up a loop and twist around and yarn over and pull through both loops. It makes this really pretty sort of knuckling. So you're going to go uh, point it down into that next stitch, come up and yarn over. You're just grabbing that yarn, pulling it through, come up, yarn over. Keep it nice and loose. This is just really loose here. Pull through and you're done with that. So you just continue going on. If you want to try a different way, you can go, whoops, uh, you can go under like this and yarn over and pull through and then yarn over and pull through that way but it's easy to get it kind of messed up. So let's do that again. Let's go under that way. 
and we're going to yarn over and pull through and let's twist it and then yarn over and pull through. So see how that twist uh, fixes it and it makes it that really decorative spot. So if you want to go under like this, let's try that twist again. Go under and yarn over and pull through and then twist it. So what you're doing is you're twisting it around down towards the project and back in the opposite direction how you normally would hold it and then yarn over and pull through and that gives it a twist. All right, so go down, yarn over, pull through, twist, yarn over and pull through. I prefer just pitching it down like this to pick it up. I think it's easier and then it immediately just grabs it and then comes up. So it's like this little pendulum. So I'm going in, little pendulum swing, pull forward, twist and grab. It's like one motion and then pull through. And then that's it. And so when we reach the corners, you just continue going. There's no specialty to the corners. You just uh, continue the stitch as normal and uh, oops, make sure you're going through both loops though. So just continue all the way around. And, um, and then when we get to where you want to connect them, um, we will um, meet back up at this spot. So pause your video and I'll see you at that moment. Be sure to put your finger on the hook when you go to put it in the stitch behind it because it helps establish uh, that tension. And when you bring your hook forward, you can put your finger on it again and then twist and pull through or yarn over and pull through uh, to get that uh, knuckling to be even throughout. So I forgot to mention that in the beginning, but wanted to add that in here. Okay, so now I'm at the end and you can see that I am one stitch before where I started. There isn't that knuckling there because we had gone straight on to do uh, this one where that crab stitch is. Okay, so the crab stitch that really got established was this big one here. Um, so right, what you're seeing right here is just kind of a small one. So you can go right into that. Just depends on the the gauge of your um, of your yarn or the size that it looks like. I'm going to go on this one and decide to go through and do one more crab stitch right on this one. Okay, and pull through. And then when I get to the one that's the um, bigger crab stitch, I'm actually going to go right in there and pull through. And then we're going to slip that stitch instead of make a crab stitch. So we're just going to pull right on through and slip. Okay. And then um, we're going to cut our yarn. And you can see that um, it completes that uh, stitch look. And then um, I'm going to just tug on that one on the back. And then we can just... Uh, go ahead and darn in or weave in our um, weave in our tails. So you're going to want to weave this one in going uh, this direction that you originally were going, like as if you were going to continue making another round on here. And then the one in the back can um, get woven into the back and go the opposite direction if you like, so it doesn't bulk up too much. And that's all you're going to need. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make the crab stitch. In a few weeks, we'll be showing how to make uh, this basket right here, the decorative t-shirt basket. Thanks for joining us today.